Hello, my name's Bridget Howes and I'm one of the general managers working at Blue Cross. I also take a leadership role in our dementia services. I'm a registered nurse and I've worked in mental health and aged care for more than 30 years. I've always had a specialist interest in dementia. Today I'd like to talk to you about the differences between normal forgetfulness associated with ageing and also about the kind of forgetfulness and memory problems that are associated directly with a diagnosis of dementia. So I'll start by talking about the types of forgetfulness that really aren't associated with dementia. These are the kind of forgetfulness and memory problems maybe that everybody has in normal life. So for example, you might forget something but later on you remember what it is. So you might forget where your keys are, you've lost them, but later on you say, oh yeah, I remember, I put my keys in the kitchen. That's very normal and a very common thing that most people will experience. Using tools to help you remember is also very common. So you might worry that you need to make lists, maybe you need to put reminders on your phone, you might use a calendar or a diary. These are very usual strategies that help people to remember and it's part of normal memory and normal ageing to have that experience. The other thing about normal forgetfulness is it just tends to be a bit absent-minded and a bit transient. So although at one point you might think, oh I can't remember what time I was supposed to be um, meeting somebody or I can't remember um, exactly where I put my um, clothing away. Those things are things that it's very common, it's transient, it's just a bit absent-minded but really once you um, think about it you'll remember exactly what the things are that you believe you've forgotten. Forgetfulness is often associated with being busy. So we have busy lives. You might be going out during the day, you might be meeting friends, you might be going to work, you might go to clubs, all of these things, very, very busy. There's only so many things you can remember in the run of a normal day. So really, that's normal. And if you're busy, you only remember the very important things. That's a normal part of aging. The other thing is recognising that. So you realise, oh, actually, I've been really busy this week. Um, so you'll schedule yourself a rest day. You might say, I'll have an early night. Or you might say, I'll put my feet up. I won't go anywhere. I'm not going to phone people or talk to other people or do any of the jobs I need to do. That recognising that you're in need of a little bit of rest and that helps you to remember as well is a sign that you, it's just normal forgetfulness and it's not part of um, dementia. So now I'd like to talk about forgetfulness that is related to dementia. The important thing to remember is that dementia is not a normal part of ageing. Not everybody gets dementia and it's a specific diagnosis. The other thing that's important to remember is if you do have a diagnosis of dementia, it doesn't mean that you need to stop everything you've enjoyed doing. You can still go out, you can still spend time with friends and all sorts of things that you've always done. It really doesn't mean that those things have to stop. The things that really signify um, that your forgetfulness is to do with dementia are things like forgetting important information. So not only do you forget something important, for example, maybe you've got a medical appointment, but when the doctor rings you and says you didn't turn up for the appointment, you really you can't even remember that you were supposed to be there. Difficulty with simple tasks is also a sign. So things you've been familiar with doing, maybe cooking a meal, maybe making a cup of tea and suddenly these simple things become difficult and you can't remember how you did it. That's a sign of dementia. Difficulty in familiar settings is also a very significant sign. So you might be in your own home or maybe a family member's home and you can't remember where the bathroom is. It's somewhere you've been frequently, but still you just can't find the locations you're used to. You might not be able to find the kitchen, where the bedroom is. That is not usual forgetfulness. This is even more apparent in unfamiliar uh, environments. So perhaps you go to a new shopping centre. Maybe you go to a movie theatre where you haven't been before. Previously, you would have been able to find your way around and work out where things are. So 
you might be in the shopping centre and you say, I want to go to a particular store, you would be able to look at the map, work out where it is and find your way there. But everything's unfamiliar and you really can't work out where the shops are, maybe where the exits are, maybe where you left your car. Those are things that really do signify a diagnosis of dementia. Forgetting words is also a very common sign. So for example, where previously you might have said to somebody, would you like to sit down in the blue armchair? You can't remember what an armchair is called anymore. So you might direct someone, you want them to be comfortable, you want them to sit down, but you end up saying something like, oh, sit down over there, you know, in that thing, you know what it's called, but you can't recall the name. Recalling names of things is really early and um, it's a sign that it's dementia rather than normal forgetfulness. Poor judgment and difficulty making decisions are also a sign. So previously, for example, let's say it's quite late at night, it's dark, it's cold and it's raining. You wouldn't normally decide to go out for a walk. You wouldn't judge that that was a good idea, but because of your dementia, you, you don't really take that into account and you go out for a walk. That's not usual forgetfulness. That's much more related to a diagnosis of dementia. The other thing that's usually recognised more by friends and family is changing in personality. So somebody maybe who's always been quite quiet, kind-hearted, gentle, suddenly becomes angry, irritable. Maybe it's a grandmother looking after her grandchildren and suddenly she's shouting at them when previously she would have seen it as playful and she would have enjoyed their company. There's a change in her personality, the way she relates to other people has changed. All of these things are signs of dementia, but the important thing to remember is they don't necessarily change the things that you enjoy doing. It's about understanding them and then maybe looking at how you could do things differently. People have many questions about dementia and about memory. I'm just going to answer a few here, but of course you may have other ones. A very common question is what's the difference between dementia and Alzheimer's disease? The easiest way to describe it is that dementia is an overall umbrella description of many different diagnoses. Alzheimer's is one, it's the most common diagnosis of dementia, but there are various others. So there are things like vascular dementia, Lewy bodies dementia, frontal lobe dementia. The term dementia just covers all of them as an umbrella term, but Alzheimer's is a specific diagnosis and it's the most common one. The second question we're often asked, asked is, what's the most common age for people to get dementia? Dementia of all types is a progressive um, diagnosis. So whoever has dementia, it will always get progressively um, more symptoms and it will get worse over time. The most common age is really related to ageing. So occasionally people get it at younger ages. So you do see people maybe in their 40s or even younger who have a diagnosis, but that's very rare. Really the most it becomes more common the older you get. So somebody in their 60s is less likely to get dementia than somebody in their 80s. It really just, um, that's the best way to answer that question. Another question people have is, how do I get a diagnosis? So if you're experiencing some memory loss or some forgetfulness, how do you find out if you do have dementia and how it would be diagnosed? The first place to go is always your GP. Meet with your GP, explain what kind of problems you're having, and a GP will do an initial assessment. Quite often that's ruling out other reasons why you might be having problems with your memory. They can then refer on to specialists, so it may be a geriatrician who makes a diagnosis. They may refer you to a specialist memory clinics where there are multidisciplinary teams, doctors, nurses and various occupational therapists, a whole team who will do a detailed diagnosis. But in the first instance, it's always the GP is the best place to go. The other thing people often ask about diagnosis is, once I've got a diagnosis or my family's got um, a diagnosis of dementia, can I still live at home? Where will I be safe? 
This really has to be on a case-by-case -case basis. We've already heard that dementia has a huge different uh, variety of signs and symptoms and there are numerous um, diagnoses that come under the umbrella of dementia. So really it's just about talking to the person involved, understanding the individual. You can check to see if they're safe but most people live at home for most of the time they have a diagnosis of dementia. There are plenty of supports you can get. There are community groups, informal support from family, but also lots of provision of aged care in the person's own home. So living at home really is assessed on a case-by-case -case basis, and it's around really where the person is most happy to be, where they feel safe, where are they actually safe and what works for them best and for their family. And really that's about assessing the person's need and understanding what suits them best. So in summary, we've talked today about the differences between normal ageing and forgetfulness and about the kind of forgetfulness we get with dementia. The important thing to remember is even with a diagnosis of dementia, you can still live a fulfilling and enjoyable life and do many of the things you've always enjoyed. Forgetfulness is a normal part of ageing and sometimes you will forget things. That's not something to worry about. If you need help, you can of course always go to your GP. It's important to remember there are some things you can do to keep your brain healthy. This includes looking after your heart, eating well, eating a healthy diet, taking some regular exercise, particularly resistance exercise, so that's maybe lifting a little bit of weight, something like that and of course using your brain as much as you can and pushing yourself a little bit and testing yourself. If you need any further information please don't hesitate to contact us at Blue Cross and we will do everything we can to help you. Thank you.